Hello everyone, this is Rajendra. Welcome to the channel. And in this particular video, we are going to talk about Kubernetes namespaces. So let's understand uh, first about what is Kubernetes namespace, why it is used and how it is used with the example. So in an earlier video, we talked about the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so Kubernetes cluster is something which is basically a set of servers, right? So let's say you have three servers, right? And then what we do is basically uh, through the kubectl, okay, you will have a kubectl installed on one of the machine. And through that kubectl, we interact with the master node. Let's say this is a master node and there are multiple worker nodes, right? And uh, through this kubectl, we interact with the master node and we already know about the architecture which we talked about. On a master node, we'll have uh, important components like API server, your etcd, then we'll have a scheduler, and then controller. Okay, these are the four, four major components we have on a master node. And then whenever we want to deploy any application, okay, we basically deploy it as a pod on any of these available worker nodes, right? But before that, basically, we need to understand the Kubernetes namespace concept, okay? So basically, uh, you can consider Kubernetes namespace as a, a virtual cluster inside this particular cluster, right? So that means what we are basically with the help of Kubernetes namespace, okay? Initially, what we call it as a, it has a virtual cluster. And what we uh, achieve with this uh, namespace is basically we create a logical partition in your cluster. Now, why we need this logical partition? Basically, the first reason that we have is basically we can, with the help of this logical partition, we can uh, group multiple pods and we can put that pods into one group, okay, or that one logical partition. And due to that, what happens is we can, as we are creating a group and putting that under one uh, namespace, that will allow us to use the same name of a pod or any other Kubernetes object at multiple uh, different namespaces, right? Like for example, you are creating one dev namespace, okay? And under that dev namespace, let's say you are creating one pod with name Nginx. Now this name Nginx, I can use it again if I'm creating another namespace, let's say QA namespace, so I can create another pod with this Nginx name, right? But otherwise, if let's say I'm not creating any namespace, okay? Then uh, there is a default namespace available in Kubernetes. As soon as we set up a Kubernetes cluster, there will be a one default namespace created. And in that namespace, your pod will be created. And then we will not be able to use this Nginx name, okay? Uh, means we cannot use create another pod with the same name. That's something is not allowed, right? If you want to create a pod with the same name, you have to create completely a new namespace. And in that namespace, you can create this pod with name Nginx, right? So now, uh, what benefits we get it, right? For example, let's say you have one uh, complete application deployment, okay? You have one uh, one application, okay? And in this application, let's say you have 10 microservices. And for this 10 microservices, let's say you have the names like uh, the front end, okay? Then uh, back end, okay? Already a specific database name, some business logic. Like this, you have the names of your uh, microservice and then same names we want to use it for pod as well, right? So now, now, when we create a Kubernetes cluster, this Kubernetes cluster can be shared between multiple teams like the development team, the QA team, the operation teams, right? To do them different kind of a deployment. Now, if the developer team is, let's say, is not creating any separate namespace, they use a default namespace itself and create this all these pods, right? Now, if the QA team is also wants to deploy this application with this 10 microservices as a pod, we have to use some different name for this, right? So it's not a good idea to just change the names for uh, multiple deployment, right? But with the help of namespace, what we can do is basically we can create a development namespace and we can create all this, we can deploy all these microservices as a different Kubernetes object, okay? Now, again, if the QA team wants to do the deployment, they can just again create a QA namespace and deploy all these microservices again 
with the same name, right? Now, due to this namespace, we are able to use that same name, okay? Because this namespace are creating a, a logical partition in your logical virtual cluster or logical partition in your cluster, right? So now let me just show you uh, in the live cluster. So I have one cluster, okay? So it's a kind cluster. It has one master node and two worker node. So as soon as we do the Kubernetes installation, okay, there are some default namespaces gets created. So let me show you that. If you run the command physical guest NS, okay, NS is the short name to get all the namespaces. So this is a fresh cluster, but still you will see there are some default namespaces that are available, right? So out of that, let's first talk about only the cube system and default namespace, okay? Then others are have some also purposes, but we will not talk about right now. For so let's first talk about the cube system namespace. So the cube system namespace basically has the all the system specific or cluster specific uh, pods, right? Now we in our earlier video we already talked about the uh, Kubernetes component, right? The API server, the scheduler, controller, etcd. Now those components are also running as a pod, right? So what Kubernetes does is, okay, those components it deploys under this cube system namespace, right? Now how you can access? So for example, if I just do kubectl get pods, okay? Now if I run this command, you can see it is showing no resources found in default namespace. That means whenever we run any command and try to access a pod, and while running a command, if you don't specify a namespace here, so by default, it will return the resources from the default namespace, right? But if you want to get the resources from any specific namespace, we have to use a hyphen n option. And then along with that, we can provide a, a, the namespace name. So here I'm giving the namespace name as a cube system, right? So as soon as I run it, you can see it is showing some pods for us. So all these pods are basically created under this cube system namespace, right? So if there is any namespace which we is specific, uh, is, uh, specific to the Kubernetes cluster, it's a good place to create, okay? We can create those pods under cube system namespace, right? But now, if I do kubectl get pods, okay? And while running any command, if I don't give any namespace, by default, it returns from the default namespace. Also, uh, let me create one pod. So if I just do the kubectl, uh, I'm just trying to create one pod, simple pod. So kubectl run, I'll give the name as a nginx and giving the image as let's say nginx and the port it runs on is a 80. So if I run this, while running this command, I'm not providing any namespace. So when you don't do that, by default, it will get created under this default namespace, okay? So this default namespace is something you can consider it as a default namespace, which will be used whenever we uh, create any resource without providing any namespace, right? So here I'm creating a pod and I'm not specifying any namespace, right? So it gets created under default namespace. So let's see if it is really got created or not. So kubectl, kubectl, get pod. And here you can see that the nginx namespace, uh, nginx pod got created under default namespace, right? Now, if you want to create your own namespace, okay, definitely we can do that. How to do that? kubectl create command we have kubectl create what you want to create a namespace okay ns is a short name for namespace and what is the namespace name let's say my namespace okay so if i create it you can see it got created let's see if it is uh, there by using kubectl get namespace command so here you can see a minus namespace got created just five seconds and right now if you want to create any pod under this my ns namespace okay let's see how to create now, let me just go back and use this same command, okay? And again, I will not provide any namespace, right? So what it will do, it will try to create this Nginx pod again into the default namespace, right? But there is already a pod we created under default namespace, so it will not allow, right? So if I run it, you can see there is a pod with the Nginx name is already, exists, so it is not allowing us to create, right? But if you now, with the same name, if you create the pod with under the namespace, minus, okay, here you can see, you want to run this or to create this pod under minus namespace i am giving hyphen n and the namespace name now if i run it you can see it, the pod got created now where it got created let's see that so kubectl get pod hyphen n 
uh, my ns okay so this will list out all the pods from my ns namespace and right and here you can see it got created under my ns namespace right so this way you can create your uh, namespace and under that namespace we can create all the kubernetes resources okay and this namespace are basically providing us a virtual cluster capability or you can see it as a logical partition right so that's the use we have in uh, kubernetes namespace uh, in the kubernetes right so whenever you want to create just follow this instruction and you will be able to create as many as namespaces you want and then you can isolate your pods from each other into the different namespace so that's it for this video thanks everyone uh, if you like the video please subscribe the channel and please share it with your circle if you have any questions please use the comment box i'll uh, reply there with uh, your way okay so thanks everyone